This game has been in the making for over 10 years and could it be the next big sci-fi game? It has a budget of over 600 million, a massive development team, incredible talent attached to it, but will it be worth it? Well, let's go through all of the details such as platforms, story, the gameplay and more so that you can know whether this is something you should look forward to or not and you should let us know what you think about this below as well. This is Squadron 42. Squadron 42 is a single-player, story-driven sci-fi game that's aiming to deliver a cinematic and groundbreaking game through technology-pushing features. It's also being developed by Chris Roberts and Cloud Imperium Games, which are the same studios developing Star Citizen as Squadron 42 is aiming to be a single-player campaign portion of that project. If you haven't been following the Star Citizen project as a whole, it's a very controversial game to talk about due to people being split into different camps because of the unusual development process and funding method through a crowdfunding that the game has used. Some are super excited for the game, while others are on the side of various media outlets that have called out the developers and Chris Roberts for missing the original release target of 2016 and using a ballooning budget of over 600 million, which is often pumped even more by asking fans of the game to spend huge amounts of money on a single ship that sometimes isn't even playable. This is a project that we have kept our eyes on since its inception, but we've never really felt comfortable talking about it on our channel for those reasons, as we like to bring you tangible games, but recently, Cloud Imperium have announced that the game is feature complete and will be moving into its polishing phase, which normally means the game can be released within the next two years, as polishing phases normally last around 12 months, with a recent example of that being Starfield. This announcement moves the needle from an if to a when. It also has an upcoming free-to-play event called IAE happening between November 17th and 30th, making it the perfect time to cover the project, but it would be interesting to know how you feel about this project as a whole throughout these last years. But what exactly will Squadron 42 be when it releases, as the actual pitch for the game is very exciting if you are into your story-driven or sci-fi games, and you can see in the background the visuals for this are amazing. As mentioned earlier, Squadron 42 will be a cinematic, story-driven single-player game, and the story itself will take place several years before the Persistent Universe, which is the multiplayer portion of the game. The official description of the game says, Embark on a cinematic single-player adventure as a rookie Navy combat pilot in the Star Citizen universe. Get to know your crewmates aboard a living capital ship while deciding how to overcome challenging missions and deadly enemies. In 2945, the brave men and women of the United Empire of Earth's Navy fight tirelessly to protect humanity while dangerous aliens like the Vandal are a constant threat along the Empire's borders. Outlaws and bandits often prove just as dangerous closer to home. These massive capital ships keep a vigilant watch over humanity's star systems, ready to launch squadrons of deadly fighters should a threat arise. You are one of these brave men and women. You'll serve alongside a vibrant crew, each with personalities and storylines of their own. While a dynamic conversation and reputation system allows you to define your character through your actions and interactions to craft an experience all of your own. Even though the story seems generic, we're quite excited for it because we don't really get these types of sci-fi story experiences anymore that make you feel like you're playing a game version of something like Battlestar Galactica, Star Trek, or any other sci-fi epic. Something that adds to this is the roster of Hollywood talent that will be appearing in the game. With names like Mark Hamill, Gary Oldman, and Gillian Anderson all being brought to life through cutting-edge performance capture. Those aren't even the only names, as we know there are more awesome actors as on the official website. They list Mark Strong, Liam Cunningham, Ben Mendelsohn, John Rhys Davies, Andy Serkis, and others, so I guess we know where a large chunk of the budget went. But if it does lead to amazing performances like we saw from Idris Alba and Keanu Reeves in Cyberpunk, then it will be worth it as it turned out to be absolutely epic in that game. But a story is only as good as the gameplay, and we know that the gameplay will be a mix of dogfights in space and ground combat, and unlike in Starfield, you can actually seamlessly transition between space combat and ground-based first-person shooting, making it a lot more immersive. 
Before heading out, players will be able to create their own character in the way that they want to, and we got a glimpse of the improved character creator at CitizenCon, which allows you greater customization and options with things like facial features, hair, and dyes. These characters will be present in all cutscenes, which have also undergone a massive improvement, with the visuals being dramatically improved. Here's an example so you can see just how much they've changed it. Pull this off of the Galactopedia. Yeah, probably, but I think their solar mass calculations are wrong, though. Well, this is ridiculous. How so? How did you handle it after Vega? I'm not sure I handled anything. It helps to remember that stuff like this is supposed to hurt. I've never been good at dealing with problems I can't fix. Well, this is one that you don't have to do alone. That's good to know. We also know from a recently released video that Cloud Imperium is also working on things that you can do outside of just pew pewing in space and on the ground. We got to see some of the puzzles and the ship deck experience that players will be able to encounter during the gameplay. The puzzles kind of look like they're inspired by Half-Life as we can see in the footage they're able to use a tether gun to pick up objects and place them on other things to create paths and solutions to the puzzles. In addition to this, we could also see that there will be a variety of objects in the world for the player to interact with using some pretty immersive animations. During the deck sections, we got to see the player walking around the ship interacting with crew members in the downtime during the missions. For the space combat, we know that the gameplay will basically be lifted from the persistent universe, so you can expect different dog fights where you will have to manage various aspects of your ship, such as its shields, thrusters and weapons, all while keeping that enemy off of your tail. The great thing about the Persistent Universe and Squadron 42 sharing their technology is that the changes and improvements to the different fly systems will be changed in both and we saw a bunch of improved flight mechanics at the recent Citizen Con. On the other hand, the first person shooter elements of the game are what you would expect from a FPS. And to be honest, this is an achievement by itself as sometimes when a game is so broad in scope, the gunplay just isn't even close to what you want it to feel like in a traditional shooter. But this game's shooting actually looks pretty stable standard for an FPS, with cover-based shooting mechanics and extra things in there like destructible environments and even gun malfunctions adding that extra depth into the combat. And just like the space combat improvements for Squadron 42, the Persistent Universe also got a bunch of movement improvements to different systems allowing you to crawl better, slide and speed through environments. So the ground-based gameplay won't be limited to just being on foot as we saw in the trailer, we will also be able to use our characters in vehicles and boats crawling, sliding, and all of that good stuff. So Squadron 42 is looking very cool and you can see why the game has been so resource intensive from a money and development time perspective. In order to develop a game of this scope, it's just absolutely massive for the developers working on things both huge in scale and tiny in detail, such as the little buttons that you can interact with to make the gameplay as immersive as possible. But even with the impressive looking features, there is a lot riding on it for the developers as it will be a proof of concept for them. It will allow the project to start paying for itself through a released product and it is a chance for them to change what is already a relatively negative public opinion on Star Citizen which is important for them in the lead up to the release of the Persistent Universe MMORPG version. So hopefully they can get it right and release a great game that delivers on the promises and you can already see from the comments on the new overview videos that gamers are warming up to the project as it gets closer to release. Hopefully the super long development time of over 10 years is just letting them cook to release the best possible project and when you put it in comparison to something like Starfield that was in development for over 7 years with an established studio that had a baseline engine, it doesn't look as bad as CGI had to hire, create a team, develop an engine and all of that stuff. Squadron and Star Citizen as a whole is vastly bigger in scope than Starfield, with complete traversal of planets, massive ships, seamless space to ground transitions, and barely any loading screens. But we're going to leave you with the recent gameplay trailer where the developers actually showcase the improvements, but do let us know what you think of the game. Archangel 6, come in. Go for six. I'm getting a faint contact on bearing 287. You picking that up? Yeah, got it. Scanning that. We're clear. 
commercial vessel under Vega 3, provided that the civilian traffic is restricted under lockdown. Copy that. Archangel. Archangel. This is Krugeri. Come back, Krugeri. Redirect to Sector 7 Bravo Echo for immediate tasking. Copy that. On our way. I know I just wrote to you, but a couple of hours ago, proximity sensors on, on the other side, side of the jump got twigged. Where it is, it might be that clan we've been battling with. I guess that last fight didn't scare them, them off quite like we all hoped it would. Honestly, we've been out here so long, I don't know what to pull for anymore. I just... I just wanted to let you know. Right as soon as I can. Stay safe. Your loving son. Never gets old, does it? Sir. It is. I used to do the same thing when I was first coming up. Post up to the flight deck whenever I could to watch the launches. Have you seen the F-8s up close? No, sir. The thing's a beast. Nimble, too. Twelve maneuvering thrusters and three mains, it sure sounds like it, sir. Captain McLaren, to the bridge. Captain McLaren, to the bridge. I saw you apply to the Flight Academy again. Yes, sir. Keep your head up. It took me a couple times before I got in. Thank you, sir. Welcome to Cloud Imperium Games Manchester Studio. I'm Chris Roberts, and I'm pleased to announce we have just passed the major milestone. Squadron 42 is now feature complete and has entered its polish phase. To celebrate this milestone, we've gathered some of our core leadership together to share what this means. As Chris says, we've moved into the polish phase of Squadron 42 which means extra emphasis on ensuring things feel fun. This means focusing on the small and large elements of the game, such as dialing in combat encounters, but also looking at the feel of how you control your character or vehicle and making sure it's immersive as possible. We've paid extra attention to how your character reacts when in their ship so that you feel like an actual pilot. 
whether that's firing your weapons, taking hits, or punching the afterburners to get to cover. Ship AI has also seen huge improvements with closer engagement distances and more varied behaviors. And with our new precision targeting mode, the action has never been as close. With the aim now on polish, we've organized the project into self-sufficient strike teams, so we can focus on individual areas to deliver the best experience. This allows us to bring all disciplines together with a unified vision of enhancing the gameplay by seamlessly blending it with polished visuals, final cinematic performances, and our ever-improving technology. You didn't see the boat, kid. You're good to keep going. We're also dialing in gameplay features, such as the ship flight model, for both atmosphere and space, which covers master modes, control surfaces, and our gold standard HUD and MFDs. Our interaction system for both the world and your character have also seen additional improvements, allowing us to hone and craft environmental puzzles unique to each location, while allowing us to tell the story of the world around you. The military multi-tool is an essential piece of equipment for every pilot that integrates all attachments into a single handheld device and allows us to create really interesting challenges, including physics-based puzzles using our updated rope tech. Unidentified vessels, this is the UEE Navy. Power down your ships and stand by for processing. Off the Our scanning, targeting and marker system has also seen an overhaul, allowing us to highlight only the essential information that you need, such as key objectives, mission targets and high-level scan information, while keeping your overall view as clean as possible. Damn skank! FPS combat and stealth, which has seen a suite of improvements from improved looting, weapon feel and balance, realistic scopes, and smoother locomotion, alongside our new and improved FPS radar and scanner that provides you an overview of the battlefield, but at the cost of ramping up your own emissions. We've also seen the introduction of our Maelstrom-powered destructible environment, which adds a layer of dynamism to the experience alongside our improved AI that can now have hundreds of combinations of traits that allow us to create unique and challenging combat encounters that really push your tactical awareness and skill. We play and review the builds regularly and call out action points in each level from start to finish on where we need to improve the gameplay.
This is an incredibly rewarding stage of development for me and the team, as the ultimate vision of the game is realized, allowing us to craft an experience that we can be really proud of. One specific area that I'm excited to dial in is the feeling of the player interacting with the world around them. Patching you in. As it's a core component of Squadron and really grounds the world that you inhabit. We've made sure that any interaction in the environment is physically represented by a character animation to keep you in the moment and fully immerse you in the experience that we've created. Ultimately, this is the final phase of gameplay iteration before we fully transition into optimization and stability on the road to release. Here's your trail. This is Colton. Come back. Always trips me out to see terraforming setups like this. Web tried explaining how atmosphere processors work. Really shows how far we've come. How is she? With the transition of Squadron to Polish phase, we've had the opportunity to find additional moments within the existing narrative to add subtle interactions where appropriate. It's been tremendously exciting to play through these areas and find places to augment the mood, support gameplay, and further embellish our story and characters. So yeah, man, I, I, I can't believe it. They said I've got to wait another two years before I can reapply. So, um, so that's why I figured I'd get a job trying try in security, because that's... Um, you know, I can get some hours flying in the cockpit and whatnot. Can't hurt, right? Exactly. We've also been capturing pickups for our lead female player character, as well as wild lines for our various enemies that you all will encounter throughout the game on both foot and in the cockpit. These consist of a range of responses and reactions that you as the player can trigger, which has been the culmination of efforts by the gameplay and AI teams. This means that you're gonna have to tangle with some very smart and reactive bad guys to complete your mission. At the heart of this immersive adventure, you'll find cutting-edge cinematic storytelling thoughtfully crafted to fully immerse you into your story. We fight today! So in 40 years from now, when you're surrounded by everything and everyone you hold dear, and they ask, what did you do in the Battle of Vega? You can look them in the eye and say, I heard the line. Men and women of the Second Fleet, I am proud to stand with you today. Good luck. Push your butt. Nice speech. Any word from the recon team? Not yet. Well, let's get into position. Throughout the Polish phase, our team is taking every opportunity to push things to the next level. Tell me you're expecting company. This is not good. The Cine team is focused on finalizing edit lock on all of our big action as well as all smaller character sequences. I could have pulled this off of the Galactopedia. Yeah, probably, but I think their solar mass calculations are wrong, though. Well, this is ridiculous. How so? We are now able to adjust our shot composition to final cameras thanks to recently crafted space vistas and level art being content complete now. It'd be nice to know how much of a shitstorm we're flying into. More like a hellstorm, Blue. One you ain't gonna fly out of. <laughs> Shut up! Now, I hadn't seen another ship that wasn't trying to kill me in days. Let alone a hauler, let alone a Jean. So you can imagine my surprise. Detailed lighting passes can be done on hero sequences so we can show our cast and convey their emotions in the best light possible. And we're making sure our cinematics are triggering as fluid as we can craft them so they form a coherent concerto with the rest of the player's narrative experience. Mr. Wexler, this is Lieutenant Commander Colton. Oh, OK. 
Commander, hey, Julian Wexler. I'm the field manager of this little operation. Welcome aboard the Archon. What brings the Navy to this little corner of the universe? We got you flying with Lieutenant Commander Colton. He's one of our best. As others will share, this is the most rewarding chapter of development, which allows us to truly experience the visceral and oftentimes emotional moments that our narrative provides. How did you handle it after Vega? I'm not sure I handled anything. It helps to remember that stuff like this is supposed to hurt. I've never been good at dealing with problems I can't fix. Well, this is one that you don't have to do alone. That's good to know. For the animation teams, polish phase means refining the social aspects of Squadron 42 that occur between the various missions and getting the behaviors implemented across all of its chapters. Here we're dialing in the hangar to make it as immersive and believable an experience as possible. For example, we're launching off a space carrier, but we still ground the feel in real-world actions, refueling, repairing, and inspecting, and making sure that your next flight mission is a success. This means we're looking out for pops, hiccups, or awkward transitions, and ensuring that everything flows and looks like all the great mocap performances we've captured. Let's ready some extra ice packs out of storage. Whenever gunners are on full rotation, you can always count on at least one of them getting hurt. We also have you covered in everyday life. The medical staff work diligently for their patients, whether they're players or crew. We really want you to feel part of an authentic crew, an important part of the UEE Navy in an enormous universe of people going about their everyday lives. Let's go ahead and clear for takeoff. Ground crew, prep bay for takeoff. Copy that. Hangar, ready for launch. Takeoff approved, Baron 2. You have the ball. Ready and hold on as you're launched off the deck of the carrier. Baron 2, you are cleared for launch. Have a safe flight, Baron 2. We want you to not only decide how you play the game, but to feel as if the people you interact with are in that world with you. I would have never thought a shotgun could be so pretty. Damn, this R-97 is sleek as hell. Like a lot of other weapons in Gemini's arsenal, it has a higher rate of fire than most guns of its type. We're working to support a feel of authenticity through world traversals, running, jumping, and climbing interactions with objects and the environment, solid weapon gameplay and enemy reactions, as well as combat realities, such as weapon malfunctions. or in close encounters of the more lethal kind. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Ooh, that's gonna hurt in the morning. As we continue to focus on the quality experience, we've been working closely with our art teams, and it's been exciting to see their environments come to life alongside us. While animation and design have been populated in locations, polished phase for my teams means making huge advancements in the quality of our characters and environments. We've established our standard with recognizable characters like Mark Hamill, Julian Anderson, and Gary Oldman. And we're now applying this to the rest of the cast and identifying any remaining tech requirements that need to be closed out. The story of Squadron 42 takes you through a variety of diverse locations of varying scales and styles. We shared glimpses of several environments before, and there's still plenty out there for you to discover. One of the main challenges the art team has had to face during the development of Squadron 42 is ensuring the visuals are complementary to the narrative of the script. The mood and feeling of a space is just as important to us as it is making sure we hit the visual quality that CIG has become known for. No good, we can't hack it from this side. Graves, we got a locked door. Can you give us access? No, I'm afraid that's a negative, Steve. Uh, I would have to add you to our system to give you override permissions, and uh, yeah, there's a lot involved in that. It won't happen quickly. Okay, we'll figure something out. Everything you see during the campaign has been heavily inspired by the classics of 70s and 80s sci-fi, but with a modern twist. We want everything you see to feel like it has a soul, its own personality, and tells of a history long before you arrived. Crafting interesting flight spaces and their connecting tissue has been one of the more unique challenges we've needed to overcome for Squadron. Developing our VDB tech to blend seamlessly between tighter traversal spaces and into wider space vistas and planets has proved incredibly difficult but rewarding. Ensuring that Squadron flows seamlessly from one chapter to the next without interruption. Creating a diverse array of locations is essential to us. Our environments need to work from a variety of scales. We need to pay close attention to detail whether we're working in a dirty engineering vent or navigating the debris of a dying star, wondering what may be around that next corner or even who may live there, how would they have survived and what state of mind may they be in. We've worked closely with our social teams in delivering a cohesive social experience when you're taking some downtime from our refined flight and FPS missions, or even missions of the more eerie kind. We'll be introducing new space stations on a massive scale all brought together and designed to be as tangible as possible. We thought about their function, their age, and tried to ensure there's a progression in artistic style with each station as you progress through the game. As you can see today, the teams are working incredibly hard, ramping up the detail and quality to match the breadth of our vision for Squadron 42. Now I know you're all asking, when can I play it? When can I play it? When we have the locked release date, you will be the first to know. Now we're in polishing phase on Squadron 42, you will start to see a lot more things coming to Star Citizen, as well as overall progress on the Persistent Universe. The polish phase can take some time. We have come this far and we want to make sure Squadron 42 delivers on the promise of being this generation's Wing Commander. Now, even though there's only a few of us in this video, I'd like to extend a big thank you to all our staff around the globe who have been putting their heart and soul into bringing Squadron 42 to life. 
and I would like to thank everyone in the community for your patience and your support. To paraphrase Admiral Bishop, when people ask, what did you do in the Development Squadron 42? We can look them in the eye and say, I held the line. I'm proud to stand with you. Thank you for making this game with us.